nobody on fire. So clearly it touched something, something other than the bot. Rashida Williams skips to her left to take that. Fine leg is in the circle. So Henry has to be careful with her lane. A bark to a run. Janelle Henry. She bought the over, the first over. In that first game, which the Jamaicans won over that windward side. This time, Vanessa walks for the first over. Attempted drive. Back face closes, dribbles back to the bowler. Another block. It's interesting that the Guyana side won the toss and opted to back first. After chasing and winning their first game what do you think is the reason for that perhaps they, they might uh, be thinking that the pitch has been used twice for the day quick single miss field by stefani taylor as recover allows the bars to cross quite easily and perhaps thinking that with a plethora of spinners uh uh the the, the spinners can come in very handy uh, on a one pitch but i can tell them that um, this Warner Park track is always rock solid. And uh, I suspect that there's not going to be um, too much purchase uh, later on. That could be one of the reasons why they opted to, uh, to bat first. And of course, probably they might be thinking in terms too of uh, setting a total and defending that. The Guyana team, they, they do defend well, especially with their spinners. They tend to apply a lot of pressure to opposing teams and uh, and uh, pick up wickets doing so. Tell you another reason I think it's a, an interesting decision to bat first in the Super 50 competition. Jamaica batted first and Guyana won that game. Well, probably a bit psychological also. Uh, so number of reasons why they could have opted to do so. Yeah, also Jamaica chased well in the first game of this T20 Blaze tournament. Chased well against the Wingwards. It's interesting, but a brave decision by Guyana. Driven uppishly through the gap between extra cover and mid-off. Chase on for Bryce, who's making her debut. Does well, keeps the score down to two. Yes, so finding the gap that time, it was uppish, but in the gap. And uh, Goodman picking up uh, two runs that time. But uh, the two batters, they, 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 they have started aggressively. And they're looking to maximize the, the, the power play. Uses her feet and use this them well and she's pumped that one over the fielder at Medon and into the boundary good aggressive batting from Shabika Gajnabi very good shot indeed uh, over the top over the top of Medon and down to the boundary for four so really taking advantage of the uh, power play uh, looking to score quickly and looking to uh, get a good score on the board It's going to tank being shown by these two bahers. Yes, of course. And uh, uh, we're in over number three. Another three overs uh, of power play to come. And uh, the intent shown. And uh, certainly looking to maximize uh, these first six overs with the just two fielders allowed outside the inner ring.
uses her feet once more, can only find the fielder at mid off. And we saw this from the last game. When Gajnabi opened the behind for this Guyana side, she was intent on using her feet and getting as close as possible to the pitch of the ball. And when she targets that straighter boundary, she does it well. Goes across the line, optimistic appeal going down the leg side. So not out, signaled by umpire Laborde. Refreshing though to see batters using their feet. Uh, in the previous match, we, we did not see much of this. And uh, pro probably resulting in fairly low scores. Short lane. Misfielded by the fielder at extra cover. Kate Wilmot gives chase. Two runs added to the total. Running two has been very aggressive by these two between the wickets. And they're looking to pick up every uh, single run. Yeah, that ball was misfielded by Abigail Bryce, uh, extra cover. Back of the lane from Prunt. Punch to, you know, Henry at mid-off. Ends the over. So a good start here by Guyana winning the toss and... Uh, uh, Batten. Yeah, so three overs complete. The score is 16 without loss. to the tight pad. Quick single. Called through by Shabika Gajnabi. She wants to take the straight. She wants to get as many runs as possible. So good aggressive running. It's good to see this happening so early in the innings. Too often we see teams only looking to be aggressive in their running at the very end of the innings. Yes, uh, and this certainly is good by the two openers for Guyana. And they're not only looking to score boundaries, they're looking to pick up singles also. And they're running well between the wickets. And of course, this is the type of cricket we 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 we, we would really like to see. Changing field, if you're at the third, it's called into the circle. Medon goes back to long on, prompted by the last shot played by Gajnabi at the end of Henry's previous over. Goes for a scoop and loses her wicket. <laughs> My word, <laughs> really going across. Uh, the wicket they're looking to scoop, missed it completely, and the uh, off fall was not back. <laughs> so uh, Jamaica drawing first blood, uh, but perhaps um, she might have taken a page. She should have taken a page out of um, Trisha and Holder's um, scoop today. Uh, she probably might not have seen her, but certainly she didn't, did not execute that one well at all. Just exposing the stumps. And uh, what was good there was that... Um, Chanel Henry kept uh, a good line. Um, she attacked the stumps, and you miss, I hit. And certainly she did hit. The, the batter did miss, and uh, uh, Chanel Henry did hit, and uh, picking up the first wicket for uh, Jamaica. Yeah, Gash Nabi dismissed for 13. And the difference between what she tried to do and what Trishan Holder was able to execute in that first game played here at Warner Park is that she was still moving. She was still on the move when she was trying to play that shot, Gajnabi. Ended up falling over and missing the ball completely. But good change in fuel put that pressure on her. That long on had been sent back on the circle, uh, onto the boundary. So she was looking for a different boundary option. Short finds at it, Mandy Mangru. New batter, misses a dot. Yeah, so perceived pressure put on Shibika Gajnabi. 
We lost over a pain. Reese previous over. She pumped her over mid on. They opted to change the field, the Jamaicans. Stephanie Taylor sent back long on to the boundary, brought up the short third. So she needed to find a different boundary option. Try to scoop past the short flying left fielder. Perhaps a little too early in the innings to go for these fancy shots. These funky shots, as some people call them. And uh, could have had a bit more match awareness at that point. And look to play straight. They were off to a fairly good start. Um, the guy in a steam. I actually don't mind seeing it. She just wasn't able to execute on that occasion, and it's because she didn't get into position early enough. Driven square past the diving fielder at backward point into the boundary. Man grew off the mark. It's a good way to get off the mark. A good shot, just backward of square on the offside. And the ball really restored it to the boundary, so. Uh, Guyana has really come out to play this evening. Uh, they're looking aggressive and they, they're playing some shots. Yeah, over pitched by Chanel Henry. Enough room for Mangrou to squirt it backward of point. Pulls her length back immediately onto the tight pad. Freeman is alert of a single. Lay by being signaled by umpire Maria Abbott. Over pitch once again. Finds the outer edge of Grimmel's back down to McLean at the third single to end the over. Guyana women 24 for one at the end of four overs. Nishan Waysom into the attack for the first time today, replacing Vanessa Watts. She comes for the fifth over. Guyana women 24 for one. Pitch right up, loud appeal, and she's given. Missed a straight one, Shanita Grimman, and she has to go. Well, the finger certainly was up. A board putting that dreaded finger up. We look at it. Looks very plump to me. Getting some movement into the, the right handed uh, uh, Grimond. And she was leg before, so uh, she make a striking twice in successive overs. Yeah, just played on the wrong lane there, Grimond. But nowhere close to the line of that delivery. The two openers back in the hut now. In walks Captain Shamian Campbell with a job to do. Certainly a job to do. She's uh, uh, probably uh, the best batter for Guyana. And a lot would depend on her here for Guyana to get a good score. Jamaica, of course, will know this and they would be looking to um, try and uh, get that wicket uh, uh, as soon as possible. But no slip in place. Solid in defense, but no run. Deep square leg and deep fine leg on the boundary. Driven firmly to the left of the fielder at mid on. Natasha McLean does well 
But Shamia Campbell gets off the mark. Campbell has received two deliveries, which he, she has middled. Uh, so she seems to be continuing a good form. Very important piece of the guy in his batting. Driven nicely up to Henry at mid off. She opts to go to the striker's aim, but Campbell is quick enough. Mango started well too. She has uh, just some five runs uh, from four deliveries, but certainly she has started well. She certainly started solidly for the Guyana side, helped by the fact that they've bowled a few half volleys at her. Driven into the foot, it seems. And Campbell is in a bit of pain. So the slow delivery right up in the block hole, and she was looking to drive and drove it uh, into the, the right in step. In fact, into the top part of a leg. Tickled. Fine enough, it looks. Work for Lena Scott on the boundary. She does well. Keeps it to two. So four runs and a wicket from Waysom's first over. Guyana women 28 for two at the end of five. Yes, a, a good start there by Waysom. Just conceding four runs and picking up uh, one wicket. So just 28, 28 for two. And it looks like it will be a double change. Kate Wilmot will replace Chanel Henry at the far end. One of the more impressive young fast bowlers we've seen in the tournament. This bowl with lots of control. A bit more pace than a few other youngsters we've seen on display. She's also a very good fielder, Kate Wilmot. Very <coughs> energetic and athletic. Slip in place for her. Deep third and a cover sweeping on the boundary. Start short and quick. Mandy Mango swaying out of the way. Good aggressive start there by Wilmot. And speaking of young talent uh, and young bowlers, you yourself uh, being a fast bowler. Nowhere close to the pace that we just saw from Wilmot, though. <laughs> Certainly not. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, uh, who which bowler in terms of pace has impressed you most uh, during the tournament? Short again, this time pulled just in front of square. Fielders give chase. Two runs added to the total. Yeah, so Wilmot has been impressive, especially her control. Remember last year, she didn't bowl as often for this Jamaica side, but she's improved tremendously over a year and she was involved in the last camp that the West Indies women had certainly she's benefited from whatever she was exposed to at that camp short again this time outside all stump punched to Shadeen Nation at backward point what, one of the bowlers I, I, I thought though who seemed to have dropped off quite a bit for Jamaica is white I think she bowled quite well last year and she had a bit of pace, but uh, she's rather slow this year. In fact, she has been dropped a number of times um, for the Jamaica team this year. She's not playing in this one in particular. 
thought she was impressive last year. Sure, again. Yeah, I must admit, I haven't seen Selena White this year. Last year, she was very good with the ball for the Jamaica side. She already stepped up in the absence of Chanel Henry. And I was surprised at the start of the tournament when I noticed that she was not playing for the Jamaica side. Obviously, with Henry back and Kate Wilmot bowling, bowling well and being a part of the West Indies setup, you understand that someone had to miss out. They've also opted for way some ahead of White. Sharp wants more. Punch upishly to Nation, who missed fuels. Single added to the total. I think White seemed to have lost a bit of a pace uh, from last year. And uh, as she was just there or thereabout. What I uh, would have seen of her, would have seen her in a couple matches uh, down at St. Paul's. And uh, she, as you say, with some, for example, being preferred to her. Yeah, but there are a number of other piercers who have been good <coughs> or decent enough for the tournament so far. We saw Connell and Aliyah Allen on display earlier for Barbados. But Mango seems to be loving the, the pace and the, the bounce. As we have had some six overs completed. And uh, look at some bowling figures there. End of the power play. Jamaica 30 have kept Guyana to 32 for two. Four fielders now allowed on the boundary. Captain Stephanie Taylor has opted to use all four. Long on deep square, deep fine leg, and deep third. That was when Campbell was on straight from Andy Mangro. Long on is brought into the circle. Pitch right up again, driven, but can only find Shady Nation at backward point. Thought I might have seen more spectators in here this evening. I think if Lee Words was playing, <laughs> we would definitely would have seen a crowd. Right up again, playing a miss. Not getting her left foot close enough to that one. Through to the wicketkeeper, Rashida Williams. Well, there are quite a number of Guyanese and Jamaicans in, in, in St. Kitts Nevis. And uh, as a matter of fact, we have seen matches here where uh, perhaps uh, the Patriots, for example, might be playing and, and the, the Guyanese spectators, for example, would, would outnumber uh, the, the local supporters. Good length, but well played. Soft enough hands to allow an easy single. And so if you're watching at home and you're in St. Kitts, it's not too late to come down. We're just into the seventh over, so come on down and support the ladies, regardless of whichever side you're supporting. Calls for a single chance for a run out. Campbell is struggling, but she makes it safely. Four fielders <laughs> tried to get that ball, and none of them were able to stop the single. So eventually it looks as though it was a very good call by Mandy Mangro, who yeah. was going to the danger end. Yes, a good call, and uh, uh, Indiana captain trusted the call. And uh, she looked up, saw she was coming, and responded. And got home safely in the end. Just three runs from the over so far. One delivery remaining. Driven to the left of extra cover. Work to do. Well timed by Mangro. It wasn't a half volley, but she really linked into that ball. Got the full weight going 
behind the shot, allowing her two runs to end the over. Guyana women move up to 37 for two at the end of seven. Mango seems to be a good time of the cricket ball. And uh, we saw that exhibited there just now. Just easing it into the offside and picking up two. Yeah, five runs from that last over. Sank down by Wayson. It's a good tidy bowling by her. Two runs, two overs have just cost her nine runs. And she's got only one wicket off Shanita Grimman. Kate Wilmot to continue. Deep third, deep square, and cover on the boundary. And the fine leg. This one turned between the field at fine leg and the the field at deep square. Two runs added. <coughs> I like what I'm seeing here by the guy in his batters. They, they are looking to work the ball into the gaps. And looking to pick up uh, singles and twos. It's not all about boundary hitting for them so far. They are trying to uh, maximize uh, every delivery. Yeah, it's important. It's not just about boundaries. They have to run well as well. Put pressure on the boundary fielders. Put pressure on the fielders in the circle. Oh, well played. It was intentional. And funny enough of the fielder coming around from deep third, a boundary to Campbell. Yes, well played indeed. She opened the face of the bat and used the pace of uh, Wilmot and guided it down to third man. Very straight indeed. And uh, picked up four good runs. Yeah, this fuel suggests that Wilmot is looking to bowl back of a length. Mid off and mid on are in the circle. She can't afford to get too full. Back of a length again. So she's executing well, even though she was hit to the boundary. Captain Stefani Taylor will not be too disappointed with that because that's where the fielders are employed. The boundary fielders are employed. Also, the two runs, first two runs of the over, it was back of a length onto the hip of Campbell. She had to turn it into the leg side. So she isn't offering her any drives, real much. As soon as I say that, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Too full on that occasion and crashed into the boundary for another four. A magnificent drive too. It powerfully uh, by Campbell uh, driving it straight uh, back to the far side screen and picking up four. Wonderful shot indeed. Yeah, I was just commending her and her execution, young Kate Wilmot. This time she over pitches. And you just need to over pitch ever so slightly on this pitch. Such a good surface, Campbell, in the form that she's in, is able to capitalize. It's good to see Campbell getting runs, though. Finds her length immediately. Kate Wilmot, she's able to readjust very quickly. So good comeback from her. That's the length her captain, Stephanie okay. Taylor, is asking her to bowl. Just giving away one, one run. Being steered down to third one by Campbell. But... I was saying it's good to see uh, Campbell getting runs consistently. Uh, too often we see our international players coming into this tournament and not doing well. Back of a length again, guided down to deep third. So single to end the over. 12 from it. Guyana women now 49 for two at the end of eight. So Guyana uh, going at a, a reasonable clip at the moment.
<clears throat> Vanessa Watts back into the attack. She sent down two overs for eight runs. These two batters, they're, they're, they're handling the quicker stuff quite well. Uh, and uh, Stephanie Taylor opting to take face off. And also opting to keep pressure on Mangrove. Mangrove is 12 from 14 deliveries. Just two fielders being employed on the boundary. Deep square and long on. Sweeps immediately. Mangrove finds the fielder in front of square. Just one run added. These are two batters who like to sweep. So we can expect to see the sweep shot quite often when Watts is bowling. And Miss Campbell takes straight. We see the fielder at deep backwards square being sent to the boundary. Force there from Ghana. Back of a length, punch down to long on. And has quite a few spin bowlers. Of course, slow tracks. And uh, I'm pretty certain that the, the, the sweep shot is employed there quite regularly. Yeah, but asking Mangu to take on the sweep. Deep square comes back into the circle. Yeah, just brought him forward too early on that occasion, Mangu. Then opting to try to run the ball to third. Misses it. Dot delivery. Playing a miss once more. She'll be disappointed <coughs> on that occasion, though, Mangu. All the fielders on the offside are in the circle. Certainly missed a scoring opportunity. Yes, uh, one which you should have put away. Sweeps again. This time behind square. Work for the fielder to do. Does well. Two runs added to the total. Good tidy work there by Ferron. Moving uh, smartly to her right uh, from square leg. And they're picking up cleanly and sending a strong return. Stephanie Taylor just having a discussion with her bowler, Vanessa Watts, making sure that she's certain she doesn't want to send that fielder on the 45 back on the boundary. Ops to keep it in. Swept again. This time, very fine. Taylor will be disappointed with the execution by Vanessa Watts. Bryce does well, keeps it down to two. It's rather interesting you just mentioned the fact that uh, Stephanie Taylor might be thinking in terms of sending that fielder back. And out comes the sweep shot just to the right of Bryce. And uh, picking up two runs, almost uh, uh, another boundary. Yeah, so Guyana women move up to 55 for two at the end of nine overs. They're showing lots of intent, though, the, the, the guy in a battles from the word go, from the get-go. And they, they know that, uh, as we look at uh, some spectators, of course, uh, we are not seeing those in front of us. They are in the members' pavilion, of course, to the right of us. And in fact, they're trained out into big old players and management staff who have come back to watch this encounter. Trinidad and Tobago obviously getting their first points in the game that played before this one. Defeating the Leeward Islands women by nine Lina. wickets. Lina. Stephanie Taylor into the attack from the Lozat Road end. Sweet attempted optimistic appeal heading down the leg side. Stephanie does not think so though. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps uh, uh, thinking that she's not turning it that much. Yeah, just asking you, Perry, if <coughs> she got some type, some part of her glove on it, Taylor. She was certain it was crashing into the stumps. Uses her feet, Campbell. This time, drives to Chanel Henry at long off. So deep.
square leg, long on, long off, and deep cover. Boundary fielders. The fielder extra cover. Just brought a bit tighter. Then Mangroves on straight. I kind of know that the Jamaican team has a strong batting lineup and they do chase well. Uh, so it'd be they would be looking to post a good total here. Yeah, driven nicely. So Chanel Henry has to move to her left. Keeps it down to one, Henry. Yeah, so Mango struggled all during the Super 50 tournament, but she scored runs against this Jamaica side. She started confidently once again. Pitch continues to play very well though. Good batting track. Third match of the day. This is good batting. Just taking the pace off, steering it uh, to the right of point and picking up a single. Four runs to end the time for over. At the halfway stage, Guyana women, 59 for two. We'll take a drinks break and we will be right back. Yeah, we're back here after the drinks break. Shady Nation has the ball in hand. Mandy Mangru and Shemaine Campbell has a good partnership. Going right now for Guyana. Full toss, use of the feet. 
smash down the ground and that's a boundary there for Shemaine Campbell. Too full and Shemaine Campbell gleefully accepted. Bad delivery of course. <laughs> Over pitched. And uh, Shemaine Campbell made no mistake. Put it away quite nicely. To see Shady Nation just signaling, you know, calm down. It was a bad delivery. She still got this in the game against Winwood Island. She came on and got that breakthrough. Full delivery once more. Struck nicely down the ground, but just for a single. And she came on in that game against Winwood Island when they desperately needed a wicket and got two wickets in one over. Game changing over that one so from Chidi Nation. So there's one little left in this over. Full and driven again. Oh, it's a quick single. Direct hit would have been interesting there, all. Yes, yeah, certainly. He needed a direct hit. And uh, it was on the bounce to the bowler. And. Uh, uh, the aggressive running continues between these two battles for uh, Guyana, captain. Yeah, 66 for two, 11 overs bowl. It's a question now of, of Guyana. They mentioned one, 140 to 150 at the toss in terms of the amount of runs that they'll be looking to get on the board. Certainly thinking that way, given how Jamaica went about their chase against the Windward Islands and the aggressive brand of cricket that Jamaica is playing right now. When these two met in the Super 50, Guyana, they were able to bowl out Jamaica for 72 runs, but the facts that we have to take in mind, it was a different venue and a different format. Yes, uh, of course, uh, that was the only game that uh, Jamaica would have lost in the Super 50. That, of course, took place down at St. Paul's. One is swept aerially to Lena Scott and she puts it down. You see the expression of the Jamaican feelers. Everyone looks so disappointed with that because it's a wicket that they desperately needed. Straight in and straight out. Yes, yeah, she got this. She did all the hard work, got to it and put it down. Use of the feet again. <laughs> Fielder and batter <laughs> crashing into each other. Don't think I'll want to be Mandy Mangu <laughs> running into Stephanie Taylor. Surely not. Hope she's okay. Good sportsmanship being shown there by Stephanie Taylor. Just making sure that she's okay. In fact, the uh, physio has been signaled uh, to come on, so uh, she must have sustained some injury. But this has been a good uh, showing by the two battles there for Guyana. Campbell, who has racked up some 25 runs from 21 deliveries, well supported by Mandy Mango, who has racked up some 22 runs from 26 deliveries. So 67 for two in the 12th over. Jamaican team, they're meeting in a huddle just to come up with some plans to see how they can get rid of one or two of these battles quite soon while Mandy Mandy gets some attention from the physio. Mandy Mandy, Mandy Mangro, sorry, 
seems to be okay. But ready to start. And it's something my co-commentator Shakira Selman touched on when she did her stint. Manny Mangu, she wasn't able to get off against any other team in the competition. Her highest score before meeting Jamaica was 10 of 27 deliveries in the Super 50. Against Jamaica, she, she was able to score 24 of 38 deliveries. So it could be a case of maybe this is an opposition that she enjoys playing against. Or it could be a case of Jamaica got her in form and now she's showing the form that you know that we know and come to expect of Mandy Mandy. Mandy Mango, I don't know why I keep saying Mandy Mandy. <laughs> I uh, forgive me. Probably viewers. sounds good. Mandy Mango <laughs> Mandy Mango sounds really good too. <laughs> Quick single. They've been doing that quite well, Guyana. And the boundary is not an offer and a quick single is there to be had. Both battles are a lot to it. Well, 24 uh, in the Super 50, not uh, a big score by any means, but at least a start. And, uh, she's benefiting from that knock today. <coughs> yes, another quick single taken. End of the over now, 69 for two, eight overs remaining. So they continue to rotate the strike, Mango and Campbell uh, looking to build on this partnership but they, they are battled well though uh, they have rotated the strike they have been putting the bad deliveries away anything over pitch uh, they, they are looking to put them away so should the nation to continue Four feelers out, cover, fine leg, mid wicket, and long arm. To battle so far, they have looked very comfortable to the pace and spin. Fine leg feeler is actually more of a long leg, pretty square out there. This one is driven nicely, but should just be a single. So good intent to score being shown by these two batters, not allowing the dots to pile up. So certainly good viewing from these two batters. Mm. Straight to the field. In this, sort, in this format, you don't want to see a lot of dot, that dots being piled up. So it's good to see that these two are intent on walking the ball around when they can't get a boundary. A change of field now after that shot. Let's play it straight to Henry. Nation probably sensing Campbell might look to go up and over. She sent back Henry at long off and calling that fielder at long leg. Huge appeal. The ball gone up. Huge appeal for a caught behind. Dung leg probably hit the pad on the way through because there's no signal from the umpire. Seem to have brushed the pads. Campbell is playing sensible cricket though. She uh, realized that that field had gone back on the long off boundary and she played it all along the ground and picked up a single. Not looking to go over the top. Yes, and that fielder just went back for Mandy Mango. She's more prone to sweeping. So they decided to send that fielder back to cover that sweep shot. So at the end of the over, 72 for two. So Jamaica looking for answers at this point. They, they need to break this partnership. Partnership which is building. Uh, we see a young karate expert there. <laughs> Probably just coming from some classes. Doing some tricks for us with the bottle. <laughs> Trying to land it. It's doing a good job, but probably don't need to be Seems doing to be it and, and 
somewhere where the, ball, the, ba the ball bottle can easily slide down. <laughs> Maybe somewhere flatter might be better. So a change of bowling, Nisha and Waysom. Picked up that wicket of Shinita Grimond earlier. It's being reintroduced. Can Jamaica searching for a wicket. Uh, but these two, they, they're batted well. This one is shot. And it's pulled nicely around the corner to pick up another bond boundary here from Mandy Mangu. Sensible batting continues here by these two. But a poor delivery though. Uh, wrong line and too short and put away nicely uh, by Mango. Bit too straight there by Waysom. Has the field set similar to what she had in that first match against the Windward Islands? So right there, that length and that line to come through for a si quick single is what the captain is asking to bowl for. So that first delivery was certainly an error ball. That uh, boundary struck by Mango, of course, brought up the 50 partnership between these two. Uh, 52 runs in fact, and uh, the 52 runs coming up in uh, some 54 deliveries. Now it's uh, 53 from 55 with that single. One is pulled, but straight to Lena Scott, square leg area. Driven to just be one feel uh, quickly to the to the ball after boundary. It's a good feeling from her. Runs coming rather easily uh, for Guyana. Although uh, the scoring rate is still uh, below six runs for over. So things have not really gotten out of hand uh, for Jamaica as yet. not the line to be bowling and white signal yeah yes indeed Earl. it's similar to what happened in that first game against the Windward Islands although there was a good partnership between the openers the, the, the scoring rate really never got out of hand you know it was always below sixth for most of the innings and they didn't finish well so it's a question of how Guyana will finish their innings to probably put some pressure on this batting lineup for the Jamaicans A diving stop from what? What Guyana would be looking to do, uh, Jamaica would be looking to do at this stage uh, is to try and uh, cut off the boundaries, uh, cut out those boundary balls. Keep some control on the scoring rate. Singles are not going to hurt them too much at this stage. course with one or two uh, dot deliveries uh, slotted in of course they could keep things under control yeah so 14 overs bold 81 for two So 81 for two, 14 overs bold. Chanel Henry is being reintroduced into the attack. Picked up that wicket of Shabika Gajnabi. Robin, 
pulls it around the corner. They'll be looking for two. Mandy Mango is hustling back. An excellent piece of running from these two. <laughs> Vision. <laughs> yeah. uh, boy, one dog. Seems to be a bit disoriented. This looks a bit lost. <laughs> Not sure what's going on. If you want to take in the cricket, stay behind the boundary line, friend. <laughs> <laughs> Chanel Henry having some fun with it. Uh. He's found his way off. Seems to be a change of place, wrapped on the pads. After the pads, what seemed to be going down the leg side. Yeah, certainly, the umpire had no interest in that at all. It's a stifled appeal, really, from the bowler. Pulled nicely, but straight to that fielder had fine leg. <laughs> Picked out the fielder quite well there, Campbell. Uh, field, of course, being Bryce and uh, another run uh, scored. A bit to the right of that fielder, perhaps to the left. And she could have easily gotten four. A good over so far from Henry. Four overs bowl, just two runs from it. She's been bowling just short of a, a, a good length, uh, back of a length, really. And uh, yes, with that length, third man is in the in the circle, so maybe Campbell can look to just run it down. Fuller this time. Think I heard two songs there. Definitely two songs. And uh, uh, stifle the peel, really. Yes, bat on to ball on to pad. So, a change of tactic in the field for the Jamaicans. They've sent back third man, bring mid off in the circle. Tries to go big, Mandy. Doesn't make sufficient connections. So it trickles down to long on for a single to end the over. Just four runs from it. 85 for two. Welcome back, Shakira. The big question here is how many runs Guyana is looking to get to challenge this Jamaican batting lineup? Or what do you think is a good target for Guyana to get from this point on? Well, at this rate, the projected score is only 113 yeah. runs. I'll tell you that they wouldn't be satisfied with 113. And it's a mistake that the Windward Islands team made when they played against the Jamaica side as well. So Jamaica struggled to get wickets initially. Then what happened is because the batters were not able to push on, they really had to play rash shots at the very end. Left it for too late. Use of the crease hit high in the air. Lena Scott runs around, just cuts it off. They come back for two. Brilliant tour on the boundary by Lena Scott. Remember, Lena Scott is a replacement in this team. She was not initially in the squad. She's replaced the injured Naomi Campbell. She's been a life wire in the outfield. Even though she dropped that catch last game and this game, she's been very good, especially her ground fielding. Normally, she's a wicket keeper. She was the wicket keeper for that West Indies on the 19th side. Second wicket keeper to Ernisha Fontaine. Use of the crease again. 
running hard around there. Lena Scott does a good job to restrict that to two. But she's certainly getting a walk out here. Yeah, hands on the hips. No, she's certainly tired now, Lena Scott. I'm tired watching her run. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, this is good from Mandy. Um, deciding to use the crease is something you were talking about last night, the lateral movement from these batters. Good to see that Mandy has that sort of shot in her repertoire. So a change of field now. Long off comes in the circle and Natasha McLean has been pushed back on push pushed back on the boundary. Yeah, she tried to go. She tried to take it up and over Chanel Henry, who was just brought in the circle. Use of the feet, unfortunately for her. Quick hands from Rashada Williams, and that's the end of a brilliant knock from Mandy Mo Mangrew. Yeah, brave by Stefani Taylor to toss it. After bringing that long off fielder into the circle at mid-off, quick work behind the stumps by Rashada Williams, who continues to improve with her wicket keeping. But it's a very impactful knock by young Mandy Mangrew. A knot that will give her lots of confidence, but unfortunately for Guyana, she has to go. So 89 for 3 now, the Guyana women. Yes, and you know, after 15 overs, that's when the batters decide to go. And she held the innings together, Mandy, but she recognized it was time for her to go to get to a formidable ta total for the Guyana team. The new batter is Sherry and Fraser. Campbell is still there. So much will rely on her to get them up to a solid total. Yes, yeah, the second time in this inning so far that we've seen a change in few put pressure on the batters and ask them to do something different. Previous two deliveries, Mangrew was able to get two runs each. So four runs in total by stepping across outside our stump and helping the ball behind square. What Stephanie, Stephanie Taylor did is sent back the field at deep backward square to stop her from getting two runs asked her to play a different shot. She tried to go over mid-off, who had just been brought into the circle, and ended up walking past the delivery and being stumped. So good captaincy from Stefani Taylor. Indeed, I must say the captaincy has been good. I mean, she's reading the batters quite well, and she knows these batters. She's played with them at the highest level. So Sherry Ann Fraser to face her first delivery to Taylor, from Taylor, that delivery. So you notice that that has actually how been how they have been operating with three fielders back there for Mandy and bring that one in the circle. So they went back to the initial plan and it paid off. Looks to go across that one. Loud appeal, but certainly look to be going down leg from our angle. End of the over, 16 ball, it's 89 for three. So 89 for 3, Shemaine Campbell on strike to Shadeen Nation. Use of the feet right away. Just a single, I don't think Jamaica will mind bowling to the new batter too much. I know Sherry and Fraser has some power in her. I just remember that 6 that she hit off of Wareham in one of the last games they played in Australia. It was such a mighty blow. Certainly unexpected, so she certainly has some power, Sherry and Fraser. Yeah, she can hit sixes and she much prefers to face spinners, but definitely leg spinners who are spinning the ball into her. Looks to go across. A lot of appeal. Yeah, it is a different challenge for her. Shadeen Nation is bowling with an all spinners action, so she definitely isn't going to turn the ball into the left handed Fraser. Absolutely no pace to work with. What a, was a close call, I mean. That looked pretty close from my, from our vantage point. This time she latches on to it. More work for Lena Scott. I don't think she'll get there. And it crashes into the boundary for a welcome for, for the guy and a team. Yeah, hot spot for 
Fraser. She does like that deep called corner area. She targets it very often. This time she goes a lot straighter than the previous attempt. She tried to go too square the previous delivery. This time she finds the boundary off the mark with a four. Venus has been adjusted. Captain has asked her to come a bit straighter. Looks to open the face and run it down through that gap. Unfortunately, couldn't find the defunct Stephanie Taylor right there at backward point. It goes across the line again inside edge. Dribbles to the left of Kate Wilmot at Batwood Square. Single added to the total. Tries to run it down, almost playing, chopping it back onto her stumps to end the over. It's 95 for three. Three overs remaining. How many more can they get from here, the Guyana? Campbell still at the wicket. Fraser. It's looking to go big from ball one. Certainly they should be looking for at least 120 from here. Three more overs remaining. Yeah, 95 for three at the end of 17. Projected score, just 112. They will want more than that. This guy on the side. Campbell is going to be key. Fraser can hit boundaries as well, but Campbell is going to be key. She's faced 35 deliveries so far, Campbell. Just sits for Fraser. Oh, it misses everything. It appears as if it did. Not sure if she got an edge into that on that, but it crashes into the boundary and by signal by umpire Maria Abbott. So much needed boundary there. They'll take them anywhere they can anywhere they can, Guyana. Yeah, perhaps wicketkeeper keeper Rashida Williams felt for certain that Fraser was going to be bowled down. She didn't make a move, Williams. The ball ended up going between Fraser and the stumps and then passing Williams going into the boundary. Before crucial runs, you're right. It doesn't matter how they come. Looks to go again, but straight to Vanessa Watts. Easy does it. So after that four buys, this hits one straight to Vanessa Watts waiting there at extra cover. So a short stay for Sherry and Fraser. Yeah, trying to, trying to create something. Playing that ball a bit too early and finding Vanessa Watts at extra cover. Perhaps could have waited a bit longer to hit it in the gap between the fielder at backward point and extra cover. But it's an easy catch for Vanessa Watts. Simple enough. Taylor has her second wicket. Guyana women now 99 for four. Fraser goes for just five. Ashmini Munasar walks to the crease. West Indies on the 19 captain at the inaugural on the 19 ladies World Cup. No one more for her exploits with the ball, Ashmini Munasar. But she did play a very important knock against the Wingward Island side in that CG United Super 50 Cup. And she's growing in confidence as a batter. She's starting to call herself an all rounder. <laughs> she has a job to do. Tries to get that one between the field at short third and backward point. Misses. Two dots in succession. Drives and misses once more. Another dot. This is turning into an excellent spell by Captain Stefani Taylor. It's just gone for 11 runs. One ball before she completes her quarter. Sharp and punched into the deep. Bahers almost collided. 
one run added to the total. So the end of Stephanie Taylor's spell. Four overs, two wickets, and just 12 runs. And she's found a way to claw her side back in to control of this game. Guyana move up to 100 for four at the 18. Yeah, 100 for four after 18 overs. What has been good too for Jamaica, very important, is the last three overs or so, Shemaine Campbell has been starved of the, of the strike at the start of the 18 over. Munisa has the strike as well. Quick single taken. Should always be looking to get a single there because Campbell is, it's very important for a guy on a team that Campbell faces the majority of the deliveries remaining in the rest of this innings. Yeah, and it doesn't matter if Ashmuni Munisar is run out. Her job is to get Campbell to face as many balls as possible. So good, sensible cricket by the youngster. She is a very good student of the game, Munisar. It's the most impressive thing about her. Oh, tries to go. That, that's pressure right there. She had no choice, Campbell. Had to go. And Watts picks up that very important wicket of Shemaine Campbell. Yeah, needed to go, Campbell. Needed to get some impetus in this innings. Just 101 at the start of the 19th over. But she's gone right across the line of that. Needed to go straight and back herself to clear the fielders at long off and long on. We saw Trishan Holder, who doesn't normally hit sixes, hit a six down the ground today. She lost her shape, swung across the line of that. And it's a first wicket for Vanessa Watts. Guyana now 101 for five. Yeah, just on Munisa, I don't know her personally, but I've watched her play a few games, even with the bat in hand against Winwood Islands in that first, in that game that they played and scored 206. I must say, she's one of the most calculating youngsters I've seen with bat and ball in hand, the way she thinks her game and the way she approaches batting and bowling. So certainly what you said is true. I don't know her personally, as I said, but just looking at the way she's developed, a good cricket in mind to have a run and such a young person as well. So Casey Schultz, the new batter. It's one thing that's said out about her, Ashmini Munisar. She seems to understand the game very well. Even with her bowling, it shows she's not a big spinner of the ball, but the way that she's able to know when to use her variations, the way she changes her lengths to batters. Clearly seems to be someone who studies the game. Good example for young cricketers coming up. Slap down the ground. Don't think it will get to the boundary. So just one. Need to find the boundary here. The last ball of the over. Just two from it and that important wicket. Can she find the boundary, Ashmini Munisa? Shot misses out. So a dot to finish off, 102 for five. One more over remaining in this batting innings for Guyana. Yeah, just two runs and a wicket from the penultimate over, sent down by Vanessa Watts. She finishes her spell, four overs, one for 16. So another crucial spell by a spinner. These spinners are really doing it for this Jamaica side. It will be Chanel Henry, it looks like, who will close out the innings for this Jamaica side. She's coming for her final over. Six legal deliveries remaining. Schultz on strike. Deep square, long on, deep third, and cover on the boundary. In fact, deep square comes into the circle. Long off goes back. So Henry to Schultz. 
Sharp pulled behind square straight to the field. That Sharp fine. Oh, misses. If there was a direct hit, Ashmini Munisar would have been running straight back to the dugout. Get the movement by Natasha McLean. Unfortunately for her, she missed the stumps narrowly. Yeah, and Henry should be thinking she got away with one there. Away with no fielder on the boundary on the onside. All she had to do was find the gap. Looks to go big, Munisa. And stumps has, stumps has been dismantled. So a fuller delivery this time from Henry. Accounts for the wicket of Munisa. Yeah, another batter going across the lane and resulting in their downfall. Ashmini Munisa trying to hit this one over my wicket. Probably tempted to go over, drag it over my wicket because if you're at long on, has been employed. Unfortunately for her, her stumps are castled. So second wicket for Chanel Henry. So two balls bowling this over. One run, one wicket. Guyana women only 103 for six. So Rayliana Grimond, new batter in. And I guess this is what having experience, especially an experienced captain in Stephanie Taylor does for her team. Every time, the two games they've played so far, every time there's been a partnership that looks like it's going to put the team under pressure, they certainly find a way by keeping their calm. Sure. Ooh. Well swing. Chance for Renault at the bowler's end. Can she make it? She does. So a lot happening out here in the last over. Yeah, I think it was an edge, actually. I heard a song for sure. There's no signal by umpire Maria Abbott, which indicates to us that it certainly was an edge. Yeah, I'm surprised to see Rihanna Grimman being sent after she case of Schultz. She is an opening by her, Grimman. It's pretty surprised by this move. Schultz on strike now, though. Uses her feet and drives it down to the fielder at long on. Should just be one. Slight miss field. Schultz looking to come back. Load the peel. And given by umpire Abbott. I thought she had made it. Good recovery by Kate Wilmot. She fumbled a few times there. But importantly, it was a good throw back in to Chanel Henry. Schultz a judged run out. By umpire Abbott, Schultz has to go for two runs. So another wicket in this over. 105 now for seven. Guyana women. Yes, this is the 60-20 game. Now let's just, just have a look at this. Mm, quite unfortunate there for Kissia Schultz. A close call, but I judged out by the umpire. Looks to tongue this one across the line. Yeah, it's a sixty twenty game so far, and with the exception of Barbados today, teams haven't really been able to finish their innings off quite well. This is something that these teams should be looking at as Henry runs in and under edge, almost going back onto the stump. Dot delivery. Naomi Barkoy, who actually opened the innings for Guyana in some of the T20 one-day games, is batting at number nine. So that's the end of the innings, 107 for seven. 20 overs bold. Jamaica team certainly looks the happier team. Yeah, certainly not what the Guyana team would have expected, especially when that partnership between Captain Shemian Campbell and Mandy Mangru was building. It was a partnership with which yielded a half century. But from the time Mandy Mangru did, was dismissed, they fell apart. And what the Jamaica side did very well is they kept their composure. Even though partnerships were building, they never let the Guyana batters get away. So just 107 for 7 at the end of 20 overs by the Guyana side. And Jamaica will need 108 to take their second win of this year's T20 Blaze.
Yeah, so we're back here live after the innings break. Opening battles, Prashada Williams coming off a half century in her first match. And Natasha McLean, who was striking the ball quite nicely before she was dismissed. So Sherry and Fraser has the ball in hand. Mandy Mangru, keeper for today's game. Captain Shemaine Campbell, usual keeper, is in for slip. So here with me, Shakira Selman. Shakira Selman, how do you see this one playing out? I think based on the brand of cricket that the Jamaicans have played all tournament long, not just this T20 Blaze, but also the CG United Super 50 Cup, we expect them to get off to a flyer and set up the game, making it easier for them to get across the line. I think the Guyanese will be disappointed with the fact that they only got to 107 and they weren't bowled out either. Yes, yeah, so Fraser to start, a two feelers out of the circle, third man and fine leg. Ball in the line delivery. Missing out there, Rashada. Umpire indicating that it brushed the pads on the way through. So, no wide signal. Yeah, deep fine leg and deep third two fielders on the boundary. Remember last game we saw Rashida Williams using her feet very early to the Pacers. Opting to leave that one alone. So she's a bit watchful tonight compared to how she started in that game against Windward Islands. Look to take the attack to the bowler right away. Yeah, she scored 52 from 35 deliveries for Shada Williams. And she's a batter who's worked very hard at improving her straight rate. This one is fuller, driven firmly, but straight to the field at mid-off. Reliana Grimmon. Yeah, I'm surprised to see that Williams hasn't used her feet to advance at Fraser as yet. Probably because she knows Fraser possesses a short delivery. at the stumps <laughs> looked to me as though McLean decided to jump before she actually got back into the crease yes McLean a bit anxious to get on strike looking to get a single oh that would have been close had that hit looking to get a single to get on strike yeah, she would have been gone McLean it's wide signal this time to the first run coming by way of an extra Fraser has started pretty well. She is bowling good pace, getting the ball through. Quite high to it, keeper Mangrove. I mean, she isn't that tall. She seems to be carrying through quite well. Another duck delivery. One more ball remaining in this over now. Fraser will just be looking to close it out. The only way they're going to win this game, Guyana, is to put pressure early on the batters and pick up wickets along the way. It's full of delivery and left alone by Rashad, who was quite watchful. And just a single off that over, well, a wide. And it's one without loss after one. Yeah, good start by... Fraser. Pretty sedate from Rashida Williams. But what's key for the Guyanese is limiting the scoring for this Jamaican side, especially in this power play. Then when they're able to spread the field if they choose to. And especially when their spinners are into the attack, then they can try to put pressure on the middle order batters in particular. So they have to control this power play. Yeah, so right away spinning to the attack as usual. Flafiana Millington sharing the new ball. McLean on strike. Her first delivery of the match. 
And I'll remind viewers, those of you in particular who are just joining us, Guyana got to 32 for 2 at the end of their power play. So wing phases of the game, keep them to under that. And they even want to go one better at least in the wicket column. So maybe have them down three wickets at that time or even four. But restricting the scoring is just as important as the wickets. Oh, right away, she's bold. So Fluffy Anna Millington gets the breakthrough. And Natasha McLean has to go back without scoring. Yeah, Millington continues to take early wickets for this Guyana side. But it's a very unfortunate dismissal for Natasha McLean. It was angled outside like stump, but it came off the pad and ricocheted onto the stumps. However they come, it's an important wicket for this Guyana side. Natasha McLean goes without scoring. Jamaica women, one for one. Shadeen Nation is a new batter. One thing, too, Guyana must be thinking is, remember, girls, that's probably the talk that they had before they came out. Remember, we were, a, we were the only team that beat Jamaica in the Super 50 round. So they're certainly thinking with our bowling attack, we can do this again. So, well, they can do this again. Sorry. And right away, they picked up that key wicket of Natasha McLean, who strikes the ball quite well. I'm surprised at the start by the Jamaican side so far, though. Last game, they were intent on getting down the pitch at the bowlers. So far, they've been stuck in the crease. I think they will want to continue to play the brand of cricket that's worked for them so far. Driven nicely by Nation, but straight to the field at mid-off. Off the mark, Shady Nation. And it's a good point, Selman. You don't want to stop playing the brand of cricket that you've been accustomed to. And then you get stuck and uncertain about how you should go about your plans. So stick to what you know. Stick to what have been working for you so far. Yeah, you have one legal delivery sent down. And that's the first run off the bat. Brings Rashida Williams. On straight to face Plafiana Millington. That's wide delivery sent down by Millington. Millington has been such a reliable bowler for the guy in the team. I almost feel like every time she's introduced into the attack, she's gonna pick up a wicket for them. A pish. Falls just short of the fielder at extra cover, Ashmini Munisar. She was dropped twice right there against the Windward Islands team. Offering up another chance, but falling just short of that fielder, Ashmini Munisar. Yeah, never got close enough to the pitch of that delivery, Rashida Williams. Closing the back face, trying to work it down to the fielder at long on. Ball just carrying on with the arm. Remember, it's a new ball, so you rarely see... Spinners turn the ball. There's a chance for a run out. She manages to get back, Shadeen Nation. So often they say, never run on a miss field. And <laughs> yeah, that one's thrashed through the offside. Picked out Casey Schultz at cover. A bit of a miscommunication there between 
the two battles certainly would have been disastrous had there been a run out there way down the leg side and too much work for Mandy Mangu to do five wides the result yes they welcome that Jamaica certainly starting that a bit too straight too wayward indeed from Sherry and Fraser Yeah, and a chance was almost created the previous delivery. It was slight, a slight misfield by KSL Schultz. But what that indicated to me was that they're even a bit reserved in their running today, the Jamaican side. Last game, Rashida Williams was looking to run all the time. Not sure why the mindset has changed. Legend between my wicket and my dawn and into the boundary for Shadeen Nation. Yeah, that's more like it. That's the Jamaica team we've come to know. Looking to take on the bowlers. So first four of the bat of Jamaica coming by way of Shadeen Nation. Yeah, she kept her balance really well on that occasion. Just played with the angle of delivery. Uh, ball angled into her paws. She does well to hit it in front of square between Sharp Miwiki and Midon. Better length, this one takes the inside half of the bat, runs away behind square. Ashmini Munisar runs around and keeps it down to one. So more intent to score being shown by Jamaica there after a four getting a single. A time runs from the over so far. Five off the bat. Short. She tries to guide that one. Rashida Williams. Still a bit too early through the shot. She would have wanted to hit that a bit further behind point. Lots of noise from the Guyana fielders, really supporting their bowlers. Turn behind square to the fielder at deep fine. Should just be one. It is a single to end the third over. Jamaica women 14 for one. Fiona Millington to continue from the Lazard Road end. Well tossed up and hit over the top easily by Rashida Williams. Could this be the point where she breaks free? Yes, and this is what she did so well against Winwood Islands when she batted against them. She looked to access areas like that up and over the fielders. So we see that she's decided, you know, I'm going to go and this is the way I'm going to do it. Put some pressure on the fielders, put some pressure on the captain as well. So a good start to this over from Rashida Williams. Yeah, just look at the way she linked back ever so slightly to get under that ball and lift it over the infield on the offside. Well played. Charter tries to punch it and misses. Williams. Remember Plafiana Millington. She took four for five in that first game. Best figure so far. In this year's T20 list. The first delivery was a bit full from Rafiana Millington. Ever since then, she's just pulled her length back a bit.
driven officially. She loses her bat as well. Williams back into the offside, the onside. Ball flew over the fielder. Extra cover. Lands safely. She survives. Wasn't too sure whether I should keep my eye on the bat or the ball. I don't think the fielder knew what to do there either. Luckily for her, just over Ashvini Munisa. Tried to go really hard at that one with Shadow Williams, losing her bat in the process. Yeah, Matt just seemed to have slipped out of her hands. But again, she goes across the line of the ball, expecting it to turn. <coughs> Dr. Andy over five from it. Jamaica women 19 for one at the end of four. Ashmini Munisar into the attack, replacing Fraser at the media centre end. And as usual, whenever Spin is introduced into the attack, Shadeen Nation opts to send her helmet off. Deep my wicket and long on. Punched down to Gajnabi at long on. Right, you. A bit of fielding off her own bowling by Ashmini Moon, sir. Shorter and pulled straight to Gajnabi at long on. Bit too short to start Ashmini Munisa. That's a much better delivery there at that time. Certainly that she should be looking to bowl to trouble these two batters. It's been a change now. She's asked the skipper who has had slip to go back. It's in a backward point position now, Shemaine Campbell. Yeah, just to close up the over. So straight on this occasion and it's helped behind square too much work for Fraser on the boundary to do four to end the over it's a bit off the radar there to start Ashmini Munisa four runs to Rashada Williams who hasn't really been getting the bowlers away tonight but you certainly accept that short delivery to get things up and running she's 11 off 19 so compared to how she went in that first game she's uh, certainly by her standards you say it's been a bit of a struggle for her out in the middle yeah Jamaica women 25 for one at the end of five she into Grimman into the attack to close out the power play pretty much following the pattern we've seen for this Guyana side Long on a deep me wicket, fielders on the boundary. 
starts to straight. Wide signaled by umpire Abbott. Two straight once more. Another wide. So two attempts and not yet a legal delivery. Yes, probably looking to slide it into Shady Nation. She's already taking the ball in, being an off spinner. Just starting it a bit too straight. That's much Goes to better. sweep again and given by the umpire. So the third attempt at a sweep. This time, the ball is on target and Shady Nation has to go back to the dugout. Going for seven. That's a much better delivery from Shinita Grimman. Fuller. Yeah, Fuller and crashing into middle. When you look at it, so certainly an adjustment in her line and length paying off here for Shinita Grimman. And a much needed wicket for the Guyana team to keep them in the hunt of a victory here tonight against Jamaica. Yeah, certainly they look adjacent. Ila, very sweet shot attempted by Shadeen Nation. And as soon as Shanita Grimman gets her radar right, it results in a wicket. Jamaica women now 27 for two. And brings the captain, Stefani Taylor, out to the crease much earlier than she would have wanted. She joins Rashida Williams, who's on 11. Yeah, she didn't get it right, her first two deliveries. They went down the leg side, called wide. But Shady Nation looking for the sweep shots on those two occasions. The shot was on. So maybe in her head thinking, you know, here I am. I can give it myself a chance to this delivery because it probably might be going down leg, the angle that she has found in the first two deliveries on that occasion, getting it spot on, Shanita Grimman, and crashing into middle and leg. Yeah, so Shamian Campbell comes from Batwer Point and goes to slip for Stefani Taylor. straight and this time Stefani Taylor is able to get enough back on it and beat the fielder at point and leg into the boundary to get off the mark. It's back to that delivery she started with Shanita Grimman not finding the length that she found to dismiss to dismiss Shady Nation and Stephanie Taylor up to the task just swivels and pulls it away to get off the mark with a four. She's four off one, Stephanie Taylor. She's going to be the batter that shows us that sort of impetus we've come to know from Jamaica in this innings tonight. Much fuller but on target this time, driven down to the field at long on. And after that boundary was struck, Campbell removed herself from slip, went back to backward point, and sent the fielder over to square leg. So five fielders on the leg side, just four on the off. And that's turned straight to one of those fielders. Naya Lachman, Rashida Williams sent back. that lofted drive once more. This time she misses Rashida Williams. Single down to long on to finish the power play. Jamaica women slightly ahead of where Guyana women were at the end of the power play. 33 for two.
So Munisa to continue. They are ahead by one run, is it? Yes, ahead by one run at this stage. Jamaica, two wickets done as well. Certainly this game is set up to be an interestingly poised one. Might say these two are rivals, the way they've things have progressed, things have gone in the the way things went, sorry, in the Super 50 tournament. Bit too short. She hasn't quite found it in this inning so far, Shmini Munisa. It's been a bit too short to these batters tonight. Yeah, so Jamaica, they were champions. Only defeat coming from this Guyana side and Guyana. They were second place in that Super 50 tournament. So a contest that you wouldn't want to take your eyes off of. And you just wonder if that's in the back of Rashida Williams' head when she's batting. It's a very sedate start from her. 12 from 25 deliveries. The complete opposite to what she displayed in that first game. She's playing some good shots and just picking out the fielders as well. Not yeah. able to find her placement tonight. Yeah, good shots, but she hasn't shown the same intent that she had in that encounter. So I'm very surprised because it paid off for her in that game. Showing a lot more respect to the Guyana bowlers. Maybe not very confident of the abilities of the other batters against a bowling attack like what Guyana has. Fielder sent back to deep backwards square for the final delivery. Again, when they start trying to close out the over. Down the leg side. May have gotten just a bit of bat on it to get it fine enough of that fielder at deep bat or square. And in fact, it's off the pad. So two leg boys to finish the over. Jamaica women, 35 for two at the end of seven. These few spectators have stayed on to watch this last game. It's good on them. It's been a very long day, but it's good to see that they've decided to stay on and support the ladies. She needs agreement to continue from the far end. Just three fielders outside the circle, long on deep music and deep cover. Driven down to long on. That's you, Gwen, that's you. That's where they are right now, Jamaica. Knocking the ball around and picking up the singles. It's something they should be looking to do more. Two straight by Grimman wants more. Fortunately for her, Rashida Williams picks out. Looks to be Naomi Barkoy. Only 45. She's just drifted outside leg on a number of occasions. Yes, the run rate is not out of hand. At this point in time, it's well below six. Chance, and it goes through the hands of Barkoy at 45. It's a short delivery, badly lined as well, and almost picks out Barkoy. Luckily for her, it went straight through her hands. Stephanie Taylor was just saying to her, you know, hit it with more power up and over. So the expression on her face after seeing Barkoy almost catching that one. So Shadow Williams lives to fight another day. She had three chances against the Winwood Islands team. Went on to make a half century. Yeah, boy, Barkoy just didn't get her hands up quickly enough, even though it wasn't a fully bludgeoned shot by Williams. Goes away on this occasion, Grimman. Dot delivery. Yes, it's been a real mixed bag from Grimman. Sometimes she gets delivery spot on. Go, just like that one she got to dismiss Nation. But it's largely been deliveries 
or in the line and length. Hold it, that missed the stumps. Yet again, we see a ball beat the batter, go through the batter and the stumps, and miss the wicket keeper into the boundary for four boys. Well, seem to got some bats on it. The umpire didn't signal buys or wide, so a lucky edge there by Rashad Williams riding her luck again. Four runs added to Rashad Williams. She moves on to 20, inadvertent, albeit. It's better delivery from Grimman, though. She needs to stay in that area. She hasn't been able to get it consistently on that line and length. She did get that wicket of nation, though. So just need to find a way to find back that length. Yeah, 10 runs from the eighth over. Jamaica women, 45 for two. Ashmini Munasar to continue. Punch down the ground to long on. There's an option for these Guyana bowlers and Campbell. They can bring out fielder at sharp and make it a lot straighter to stop the easy single down to long on. Right there. To stop that single down to long on. And ask the batters to go across the line of the delivery. Of course, it depends heavily on the execution of the bowlers. Yes, I agree with you, Stephanie Taylor. She is a classy batter, has all the shots as well. But just put some pressure on her, as you mentioned, get that feel in the circle. It's a very level-headed approach from her since her introduction to the crease, looking to walk it around and keep the scoring rate, uh, keep, the, keep the runs taking over, rather. So just bring that fielder up and make her think that she needs to take another option. Yeah, so that's another option. And that's the next option I was getting to. But another option, I think, and we don't see it too happen too often in cricket, it's just bring that fielder at sharp, may wicket, to almost a very sharp mid on. You don't have to make any adjustments to the field right along on. Bring them right there on the pitch. And ask the batters to go across and try to hit delivery squarer. <laughs> Good over once more from Ashmini Moon and Sir for the eight for two at the end of nine. Sometimes it, it, it comes down to what what the plan is with that fielder at short mid wicket are you using that fielder to stop a single are you using that fielder to take a catch because if you're looking to be aggressive as you said you get that fielder closer in the eye line of the batter and you don't mind it to take a single because you have mid sh deep mid wicket on the boundary so you're looking for wickets and that's also a good option as you mentioned yeah both batters seem very comfortable hitting the ball down to the long arm fielder if you are not comfortable enough to bring that long on fielder to mid on, then that is an option, especially on a pitch that isn't turning. So the ball is sliding onto the bat. It's very easy to hit through the line of the ball. So you're, no, you're just asking them to play with half of the bat as opposed to the full face. Yeah, so they've gone to their left arm option in case you are short. Start short, Schultz. Easily slap to the fielder at deep cover. You have a plethora of spinners to choose from 
Guyana team, Naya Latchman, that yet to be introduced into the attack. Mandy Mangru herself, who's wearing the gloves, seeing her bowl some half spinners. The, the captain used to bowl as well. <laughs> yeah, she does have an international <laughs> for Wicket Hall bowling like Brits against South Africa in South Africa. Every time we go back to South Africa, she talks about it. Too short again from Casey Schultz. Yeah, but very versatile player, Shamian Campbell. And it's looking as though Mandy Mangru is developing into one as well. She can bat, she can bowl, she can wicket keep. They can bowl field. Overcompensating to full on that occasion. See, just too many runs just driven down to that field right along on. Yeah, it's just too easy for Jamaica. There's no pressure in terms of the scoring rate. So you have to find a way to create that pressure. So when there are good deliveries like that, it's easy for Stephanie Taylor and all her experience just to keep it out. Too short and hit behind square. Fielder cannot get around to stop it. Shanita Grimman, another boundary to Stephanie Taylor. She goes to double figures. And then when there are deliveries like that, a player of her caliber will always put it away. So it's just been too easy for Stephanie Taylor since she's come to the middle. No pressure, bud. Come on, come on. She won't mind that, certainly. Chance for a catch and it's put down. Crucial chance put down by Casey Schultz. It was a caught and ball opportunity. Stephanie Taylor doesn't give you too many opportunities. She should have held on. A single to end the tenth. Neck and neck at this stage. Guyana women were 59 for two. Jamaica women 56 for two. And it will be a drinks break. So welcome back after the drinks break. Nice little partnership building here between Stefani Taylor and Rashada Williams. 
Guyana, they have decided to go back to pace, so Sherry and Fraser is being reintroduced. He's opting to go around the wicket to the right hander. All Smithen, good night to you. Uh, good evening once more. Uh, Stacy Ann. Yeah, that's too short. That's too short, and that's a help yourself delivery to Stephanie Taylor to start from Sherry and Fraser. For a class player like Stephanie Taylor, she's not going to miss out on that one. Uh, of course, we Guyana just about halfway. In fact, uh, Guyana just about halfway through with these overs. And uh, the uh, Jamaican team, though, seems to be in the ascendancy at the moment. That uh, boundary uh, took the partnership to th some, some 33 runs uh, between these two. a better follow-up delivery from Sherry and Fraser. You expect that, a player at her level and her quality. Less than five runs are over now for Jamaica. In fact, just another 48 runs needed from 50 deliveries. lofty drive from Stefani Taylor. Gajnabi is going to make an effort, but the ball will win the race. So a second boundary in this over of the bat of Stefani Taylor. Good shot indeed uh, by Taylor. Uh, taking it over the infield over mid-off. And uh, mid-off just inside the circle. And uh, getting a four. Uh, so very good shot indeed. But can't but Two boundaries in this over so far by Stefani Taylor. And uh, really pulling the stops out uh, now in this over. That's a change in the field. Long off goes back and third man comes in the circle. <laughs> Almost chops it on that time, Stefani Taylor. It's a single though for the effort. And what we see happening is that <laughs> Taylor has decided to accelerate. She, uh, it's a small score, but certainly she does not want to leave uh, this until too late. Let's sit in the black hole that time, Fraser. I'm wondering why she chose to go around the wicket to the two right-handers. I know it's an option that you see a lot of international bowlers using right now to cramp the batter of room, not allowing them to free their arms. But it seems like it's an, it's, a, an, a, it's an option. You know, going around the wicket to these two batters, they seem to like that option from Fraser. This one is too full and pulled away to the square leg boundary. And it's just what I was saying, that angle, they seem to favor it. And she's missed her line and length a few times in that over, Sherry and Fraser. So three boundaries coming off that over. Certainly that option not working very well for her. She has conceded um, three boundaries in this, in this particular over. And the score certainly has accelerated uh, tremendously uh, since the water break. Yes, 13 runs coming off that over. Stephanie Taylor, she's paced her innings quite well. Untroubled since her introduction to the crease. Just that chop chance from Casey or Schultz. Apart from that, nothing has really troubled her out there in the middle. So Flaffiana Millington, wicket taker. First, picking up that first wicket of Natasha McLean has been reintroduced. Campbell, of course, looking for wickets here. Uh, wickets is what is going to put them back into the game. Uh, they're not going to win this by containing Jamaica. Quick single taken, well judged by these two in the end. Yeah, certainly there's only one way you can win this game. You have to bowl out Jamaica. They're cruising right now. They're 70 for two in the 12th over. This one is badly lined again and a misfield. Casey Schultz is quicker on the boundary so she'll cut off 
cut it off and keep it to two. Stephanie Taylor is looking for three. Does well to get back. <laughs> so uh, Taylor looking for every run. <laughs> uh, we saw a good bit of backing up there. Uh, saving what could have been uh, uh, extra runs. And Guyana need to save every run at this moment. Yeah, good backing up by the young fielder, really, and agreement. It would have been four had it passed her. No one was behind there. So, Flappy and Amelia going to continue to Shadow Williams. Gets herself some room and walks it down to Long Arm. Millington, of course, brought back to try and take a wicket, uh, but at least two batters are set. And uh, batting quite well for Jamaica. Uh, there you go, really easy batting for these two. Um, Rashada Williams, she's 32 or 43. Although she hasn't really found her timing and placement in these innings, she's found a way to ha hang in there, and that is certainly what Jamaica needed. Well, she has been in good form this season. And it's important Looks for to us to guide, guide this one down to third man. Gets a single as well. So some smart batting coming in there from her as well. It's a small total, but uh, Jamaica, of course, would need someone to bat around. And uh, uh, so far, Rashada Williams has been that one. Um, she has anchored the innings. Oh, this is excellent placement. Really, Anna Grimman tried her best to get to it. But a shot like that, you almost feel like it deserves four. Really, Anna Grimman, she really tried. Patrick in a valiant effort, but diving over it in the end. Should have stopped that one, really. And she seems to be limping a bit also, but certainly she should have stopped that one. A good shot, but uh, should have been cut off. Yeah, it brings up the 50 partnership as well between these two. Stephanie Taylor getting some attention. When she attempted that, that third run and she tried to scamper back and she got back to the other end, she was just holding at her leg for a bit. So getting some attention from the physiotherapist. Twelve overs gone. Stephanie Taylor still getting some attention from the physio. Seem to be okay. Back up on her feet. I'm gonna see a change in bowling. So Sherry and Fraser, after conceding 13 runs, and that over that she bowled has been replaced by Naya Latchman, the young leg spinner. Latchman, who did well in the uh, 50 over fear. In fact, she was one of the top five wicket takers in that uh, segment of the tournament. Uh, surprisingly, being brought on a bit late in the piece. Hit with some power, but straight to Campbell at short mid wicket. Latchman is bowling to a field with one cover fielder out on the boundary. And there's a square leg, mid wicket, and long arm as well. Those are the four fielders out. This time gets it to the right of Campbell. So able to get one to get off strike and get Taylor, who's been striking it quite well. And since she came out to the middle. Really been easy batting for Taylor tonight. 
We just require 28 runs or 46 balls. White signal by umpire Candice Laborde. As a captain, Stacey, and uh, when you, your team has scored a low total and you have to bowl the opposition out to win, uh, the, your first thought is to think in terms of the bowlers who are going to get the wickets. Some work to do for Mandy Mango. He does well. They get a single. Yes, continue what you were saying all. And I, I would have thought that uh, Latchman, who is a wicket taker, uh, I, I would have thought that she would have been introduced earlier in, um, into the attack. And here she has come on with just um, 28 runs, now 26 uh, to get, and uh, some eight wickets also. Sometimes, though, when, when a captain has too many bowling options, <laughs> uh, that could be a bit misleading. Yeah, that could be the case as well. See, Naya Latchman with the right handers that Jamaica have at the top of the innings. I can't remember seeing a left-handed batter actually in their batting lineup in the Super 50. I thought she would have been introduced a little bit earlier. But that delivery certainly isn't proving our case. This one is badly lined and helped on its way for another boundary. Yes, sir. Uh, the Jamaican whittling down this, to this, uh, this total. And uh, this could be over in quick time. It's 87 now for two. 13 overs bold. Rashada Williams is 35 or 47. Stefani Taylor has quickly moved on to 32 of just 19 deliveries. So a good partnership between these two. They came together uh, when the second wicket fell with the score on 27. Uh, it's now 87 for two, so 60 run partnership. The captain Stefani Taylor, Taylor continuing the aggressive blueprint. This one is hit aerially. They won't get to the field out there. They won't push for two. They push for two now. But that slight misfield. Good alert running by these two battles. Just to support what I was saying about Latchman, she was um, second in terms of number of wickets taken in the uh, 50 over tournament. Of course, uh, this is a slightly different format. But she's in the team nevertheless. She would have picked up some 11 wickets in that uh, 50 over tournament. Use of the feet. Hit high. Hit far enough. Is it going to get to the boundary? No, it doesn't. It's a good fielding, good ground covered by Casey Schultz. Wasn't timed properly. This is proving to be far too easy for Jamaica at this point. <laughs> Just another 17 runs needed. And eight wickets to go. And uh, both batters set. Williams on 39 and the captain on 32. Those again. So some aggression being showed here now by Rashado Williams. Fiona Millington has one more delivery to close off her spell. And defended and a quick single taken. Really good running by these two and they'll come back for a second, I'm sure. As Thompson is broken at the keeper's end. And the only way she was going to effect a run out is if she had grabbed, picked up the stump with the ball in hand. So good awareness shown by these two to come back for a two on that occasion. Stephanie Taylor seems Stephanie Taylor seems to have recovered nicely. 
Uh, she was really charging down the track that time. And the quick to go back for the second run. But Jamaica really doing this one quite easily now. 15 runs away. And uh, certainly after the what week they, they would have uh, picked up the tempo. So Lachman to continue. Three twos in that previous over. Nice use of the feet. So they're going to look to do it in a hurry now, Jamaica. Going to look to finish this off as quickly as possible. Pick up that bonus point as well. On the ground once more. Yeah, and the team at the moment seems to be going through the motion. Oh, hit straight to Naya Latchman, who finds a way to hold on to it. Stephanie Taylor cannot believe it. And she has to go back. That was struck powerfully. <laughs> that was like a, a bullet from a gun. Trace a bullet. And she found some way of holding on to that one. Powerfully struck. And well held there uh, by Latchman. Yeah, and so she has to get some attention from the physiotherapist. That's how hard that ball was struck. But she found a way to hold on to it. That's one has a way of picking up wickets. See, she's just in a second over. And uh, has picked up the wicket of uh, Stefani Taylor. But uh, seemingly much too late uh, for Guyana. Yeah, she's a wicket taker. Fair to say she's a wicket taker. The leg spinners usually are. Not an option a lot of batters like facing. And Stefani Taylor and Rashada Williams, they had the measure on her in her first over. And that ball was certainly racing to the boundary had she missed it, but hit straight to her. She probably bubbled, juggled it two, three times before she finally held on. She did a good job there, the young lady, to hold on to what you described as a bullet from a gun. <laughs> so she, Chanel Henry, the new batter in the middle, right away she's off the mark, looking for two. Rashada Williams is not up to it. So Latchman just in a second over getting a wicket, but uh, perhaps uh, much too late for, uh, for Guyana. Oh, and she picks up another one straight through her this time, Rashada Williams, and she's bold. Yeah, that's what we've been saying, Earl. Straight through her. We were wondering why she wasn't introduced earlier into the attack. Her first over wasn't the best, but she's found a way to climb back into this game for Guyana. But you're footed right, though. Uh, she's a wicked taker. And uh, yes, of course, uh, leg spinners, you know, they could be expensive at times. Uh, but of course, uh, you can bank on them to, to pick up wickets. 12 runs needed of 31 balls. Still in favor, hev still heavily in favor of Jamaica. So she has gone bang bang to wickets in this over so far. So one more delivery, meaning in this over. Can she pick up another wicket? Perhaps. <laughs> Uh, giving the Guyana team some hope. It's defended by Ferran. So three runs and two wickets coming off that over. Jamaica on 96 for four.
So 12 required of 30 deliveries. Ashmini Munisa. Ball in hand facing up to, well, ball in hand to Chanel Henry. Some late drama here in this last encounter. Those two quick wickets, those two wickets uh, by Latchman. Even slight hope to Ghana. Play that ball now. Another wicket out to here. <laughs> Could create some panic for the Jamaican team. Gives ourselves some room this time. Cuts it out to that field and cover. So one run after that. Our four deliveries so far. Chanel Henry is going on to have a word with Kenisha Ferran. The new batter has just joined her. Chanel Henry, of course, is an experienced player. The type of player who will not panic in this situation. Certainly not, and she's the type of player that's going to play her shot still. But delivery is there to be put away. She's going to put it away. So Ferran defends to end the over. Just one run coming off it. They now require 11 of 24 deliveries. Yes, a uh, pretty easy task there for Jamaica. And the Latchman will bowl a third over. Perhaps uh, Campbell is uh, saying um, to herself now, if only. If only had brought Latchman into the attack earlier on. Certainly has the knack of picking up wickets. So Latchman in her third. Oh, that one just misses the stump. So it was a wild heave there by uh, Chanel Henry. It was shortish. It was very slow through the air as well. Missed it completely. So to get a single. To get Ferran back on strike. Might see the squeeze being put on here by Guyana. Now that the new batter is on strike, and rightly so. I feel he's called into the circle. I'd like to see Longhorn come up as well. Yes, Longhorn is still back on the boundary. So there's an easy single there. And there you go. Gets that easy single. stage you would think that uh, Guyana would be looking to apply some pressure and uh, force these batters to go over the top. It's down to single figures now for Jamaica. Oh, an edge just passes the glove of Mandy Mangru and they managed to go diving stop there by the fielder. That short third. Barker, in fact, uh, seems to have eluded her a bit and gone behind her. She had to retrieve. There's now seven required from 20 deliveries. So Naya Latchman certainly creating some issues for these batters. Almost plays it back to her as well. <laughs> Just want to see some fielders closer around the bat. You have nothing to lose here, Guyana. Absolutely nothing to lose if you just call in a few fielders and try to create some more pressure. Yes, um, force the batters to take risks, force them to try and go over the top. He's back. 
punches it with a feel that shot cover. So now that the over is finished, four runs coming off it. 101 for four. Three overs remaining. Kenisha Ferran will be on strike. It'll be interesting to see what sort of field Captain Shemaine Campbell employs for Ferran. Griman has the ball in hand. She was quite inc inconsistent with her bowling tonight. She did pick up that wicket of Shanita, um, sorry, Shadeen Nation, but just wasn't able to find a consistent line and length to the right-handers. Let's see if she finds it here to Ferran. Long on is still back. Mid-wicket as well. Dot to start. Good start to the over. And uh, rolling an off stump line. Oh, there's a huge appeal. There's a huge appeal. They're still going up. No, says umpire Maria Abbott. Well, they'll go up for anything at this point. They're, they're looking to pick up wickets. have been going down leg might have missed leg oh she gets a short one the inconsistency i was talking about delivers the sh a short delivery at a crucial point in the game and surely easy pickings for the batter kenisha ferran might be good to see that a leg before decision again oh uh, well not given of course so three runs required now from just 15, from 15 deliveries. Now the long arm fielder comes up. Work with me, Grimmy, work with me. She needs a grim and just need to, needs to get it right no for pressure, her skipper. No Darts it in and she's bowled her. Might say a bit too late. Just three runs required. Certainly doing their best to create drama here, Jamaica. It's three runs required now from 15, 14 balls. Not uh, good batting, not good batting there by uh, uh, Ferran. Charging the ball and missing completely and being bold. Uh, she should have been looking to work this one into the onside, working it into the gap and, uh, and pick up a single. Not to the pitch of that one. And being beaten and bold. It's a new batter now, young Lena Scott. Did a wonderful job in the field. You now she has a job to do with Chanel Henry. We'll probably just be telling her, see off these two deliveries unless you can put them away and give me a strike for the next over. I'll take it from, from there. But certainly, uh, after that good partnership between uh, uh, Stefani Taylor and Williams, uh, uh, the Jamaicans don't seem to be struggling a bit to get towards this paltry total of 107. Driven firmly, they look to take on the single. Ah, Would have been close had she collected cleanly. Get the single nonetheless. One more delivery remaining in the over. Well, she certainly seemed to have decided that once she played the shot, she was going to run. <laughs> had to take it cleanly and, and effect the run out. Direct hit should have been long gone. Certainly, certainly true. So two more runs remaining. Quick single taken again. Direct hit this time. I think the batter has made her ground. Seems to have made it quite comfortably. Scores, of course, level now. Yeah, so one run remaining now for Jamaica. It's something I was beginning to talk about at the end of the Guyana innings. A lot of the teams in this competition, with the exception of 
Barbados today. They haven't really closed out their innings well. Kind of struggled at the back end of the innings. Mainly teams that set totals. We saw Barbados in their first encounter struggled as well at the back end of, of their innings. Seemed to get a bit stalled at the back end of their innings. So certainly something a lot of them will be looking to address heading into the rest of the tournament. I think too one of the problems is that uh, some of the teams are too uh, reliant on a couple of players. And yes. once these players get out, the tail end tends to struggle uh, 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 as the match is over now with that single. Yes, that single brings up another victory for Jamaica. Created some panic at the back end there, but able to get over the line in the end. So victory to Jamaican women, won by five wickets tonight. Yes, and uh, a good victory for them. They remain unbeaten um, in this T20 blaze. Uh, so uh, Guyana, of course, winning the first match and losing this one. Uh, so uh, it comes to the end of what has been a very long day. We've had three matches and... Uh, First of all, we saw uh, the first match, uh, uh, very first match of the day. The Windwell Islands going down to Barbados and then um, Trinidad and Tobago beat the Leeward Islands. And now we have Jamaica uh, beating Guyana to complete uh, today's play. Yeah, so join us on Thursday for the third round in this Cricket West Indies T20 Blaze. Thank you for joining us and good night.